Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. If you haven't seen this show before, uh, I'm an attorney. I work at a firm uh, called Myrick O'Connell. I do nothing but elder law. There are 60 of us at Myrick O'Connell, which means there are enough of us that that's all I have to do. If I've got a, other kinds of problems, I let somebody else talk about it. Now, you, you may have uh, seen me at the Salt Marsh, because I do presentations there at the, at the Council on Aging or at the Senior Center. Um, this show is really meant to supplement that um, by talking not so much about law, but about mm -hmm. the kinds of people that you really need to know here on Nantucket if you're getting older. And by getting older, I mean like 60 or older, right? Um, and one of those people is Sue Story, who is here. And Sue, thank you very much for coming. Hi, Arthur. Thank you. And, and the reason why you're here, or the reason we were just talking, is that I had two different clients who, who I was doing work with, and each of them independently said, oh, you really need to talk to my financial planner. She's terrific. So I met, met to meet <laughs> Sue's story, and we got to talk, and I realized that you really do sound terrific. So I figured it would be really useful for people who are typically clients of mine to get a sense of what the issues are that they might be facing. And one of the things that you said at the beginning before we were just chatting, you said, so it would really be like problems like problems that I would face, you know? Yes. It's, like, it's like, so what are your problems, right? Because I was just mentioning, so I'm turning 67 this month, yes. you know, and we have three kids, you know, and my wife is thinking about retiring. She's a 66 this year, right? And we're trying to figure that stuff out, right? So, so I've got all of those kinds of issues, you know, we have some tax deferred things, money, you know, we don't know what that means because I never did that, you know, I was focused on <laughs> elder law, you know. Um, and we, you know, she's got a pension, and we're trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And we have three kids, and are as they they're very much like. I, I, whenever I do my presentations, I have this couple called Frank and Mary, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I always tell people, if you get that joke, you're old enough to be my client. You know, <laughs> um, but but you know, and the and like every like all of them, like Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Our three kids, we figure when we die, we want to divide things up among the kids. But our basic goal is to make sure we don't run out of money before we die and that we get a, you know, a little time to just not work and stuff, you know. So those are my goals. Tell me if that's who, you, when you're talking to people, what do you, how do you figure out, you know, what they might need? It's, what do you do? It's funny. Our thing oh, wait a minute. I'm not, I promised you before that I would ask you a different question. So how did you end up doing this? How did, how did you end up doing this? <laughs> um... I just, I was the kid that put her Christmas and her birthday money in her passbook savings account, took it to the bank. Totally loved, unlike me. This loved is, yeah, yeah. watching it add up. I just kind of grew and up, it, fortunately, in a very fiscally responsible family, and yeah. our parents taught us how to, you know, to be that way. And I went to, shortly after college, I said, well, someday I'm going to have money. You never have money when you get out of college. No. 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 <laughs> what do I do? How do I start saving? How no. do I, you know, do I do the retirement plan at work? Do I do this? Someday yeah. I want to have a house. Someday, you know, all of those things. Yeah. And I had gone to um, a financial planning seminar just out of curiosity for looking at my own situation, yeah. and I loved it. loved taking piles of information and assimilating it all into a plan or strategy. And that occurred to me I could do it for a living and really help people. And, um, While doing something that you really like. Yeah, to do something is, I really, cool. really yeah. like. I'm very yeah. fortunate. Um, and... My grandmother had been sort of, there were some non-great financial things mm -hmm. that happened with her. Um, so you saw the things With various could, people, yeah. yes. Things could and, go south, yeah, yeah. Um, so that really sparked my interest in being an advocate for doing the right thing and having yeah. plans and strategies. And it's interesting, you brought up that you're, 65? 67, 67 this month. This month. <laughs> 66. Later this month. Have you decided when you're taking your Social Security? Uh, well, see, now we were one, I was one of the last <laughs> ones that was able to file and defer, 
right? Okay. So that my wife can start getting, you know, half of my check when she retires this year, when she, when, when she has, not when she retires, she, when she's going to keep working, when she hits 66 this year, right? But I'm thinking I'm going to wait. So can you talk about that a little bit? Talk well, to, some of the things, yeah. you know, you've spent your life working, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, saving, maybe not planning, maybe just saving because you were supposed to and someday you're going to retire. Right. People used to retire much earlier and your wife's still working. You're, past, you're both past 65 essentially mm -hmm. and um, don't really have any desire to slow down no, from, not for a while. you know, what right. I can tell. So, and we put through three kids through college, so there's, we're still saving You still up. feel very young, <laughs> yeah. though. You, you're not ready to be elderly. You know, we're mm. retired, sit home and um, do, you know, watch, just watch TV, do right. nothing. So Even compared to like, but, you know, our parents and our grandparents and stuff. Yeah. At right. And age. there are so many more yeah. options in life and medical technology, all those things is going to keep us all living longer. So Social Security changes and evolves over time, depending on... Um, the government essentially and uh, deciding there are lots of different strategies for deciding when to take Social Security um, you know you can take it as early as 62 then there's your full retirement age which could be anywhere from 65 to 67 and a half or you can defer it until 70 so what's the best um, strategy it, and it's different for everyone um, the most, I think one of the most important things that I've seen and come across, um, is for people to have a general strategy. You have maybe the house you've owned for years. Yeah, you to might have, be, to have really thought it out. Get, keep going. Yeah. yeah so or to, typically or you've to got the home. Yeah. Right. The home. Um, maybe you both have retirement accounts, maybe one of you has a pension. Pensions are very rare these days unless you're a state, state. employee. Right. Um, maybe you have some money outside your retirement you save. Maybe you have a rental house too. That's very common out here. And at what point do and, you and decide... And only on Nantucket and on the other island does people's rental houses are on the same property with their regular house. <laughs> One of the most astonishing things when I came out here, I'd just never seen that before. But I, not to digress. No, but, but yeah. you're, you're right. And, so um, it's actually a source of income right where you live. Yeah. What's interesting on that part is I've seen people who um, say so we're going to retire, we want to, we're going to build a cottage on our property and rent it out and that'll be our income. Mm -hmm. Well, deciding to become a landlord in your mid-60s 70s right. later, it, you know, financially the numbers look really great, but the quality of life is a whole other um, issue and the things that can happen having right. tenants and people. And I suppose so, here, because they're turning over, cause it isn't like you're having this one great tenant that's going to be with you forever, right? It, you're, right. You're, you're, it's like and it's very difficult to have someone removed, you know, right. if a situation isn't working out or if there's been... Um, the house has been damaged, you know, anything like that. So that's not always the rosiest picture. So deciding, you know, from the various assets you have, the house, maybe the rental house, the savings, the Roth IRA, the traditional IRA, the 401k, um, with any inheritances you might know you're receiving, even though we never plan on that, but sometimes they're, those are knowns. Um, structure a strategy for when is the best time and the right order to draw down on um, to draw on your various assets and to use that and stuff. to set up yeah. right because the most important thing um, that you can have is a reliable income stream. Everything else will vary. Your choices will vary. You'll make decisions. You and your wife will make decisions now that you may think you want to. Try, you know, do X, Y, Z, but five years from now, it may be entirely different. Right. Something may come up, family situations change, you may want to live closer to your children or grandchildren. Um, so, yeah, so those, but are, what's those, are, those are huge. Those are huge, and you can't predict them. Right. You can't predict them. 
you can't develop a plan ever that's concrete for the rest of someone's life, you know, unless it's their very last stage of life. Um, so it's really important to have a predictable income stream, you know, know what your yeah. options are and kind of a strategy to, you know, for that. The income stream, let's say from your, you know, 65 to 80 is when most people will travel, explore, um, do various things. Right. And then that same block of money that you may have been using, using for your leisure and recreation and things like that, well, suddenly some of that travel budget, it's going to morph over into health care. Right, right, because you get to that point. And dental right. and just cost of living and other things. That's a really good point, because, if it, because, because uh, once you get beyond that certain age, the likelihood of, of there being more of a cluster of medical issues as opposed to just an occasional thing just goes way up, right, once you're over 80. Or... And I think people's, um, <laughs> I've just seen in my own family, the tolerance level goes down for do you really want to deal with the airlines and TS and all that? Right. You know, is it, is travel it, today right. isn't what it was 20 years ago. No. I still, even 10 years ago. I still remember going, to, going on airlines where it was practically empty. The, the concept of that, being on a plane that was like a third full or a quarter full. Oh, was in the service. Inconceivable. <laughs> inconceivable now. But as you say, I, I always tell nuts. clients that there's, you know, there's that point at which the hassle of the trip gets bigger than the quality of the destination. You know, and you just that go, well put. I don't, you know, I just, to go there, especially if you've been there, right? You mm -hmm. say, do I want to go there again? And deal? yeah, yeah. So there's a point where it really does shift. But it's yeah. an interesting point, though, that through all of that, the real issue is, are you, you know, at, at what level of income do you need in order to sustain any of those things? Right. It's really all about income. I've been in the business just about 30 years now, and seen so many lots of situations and if I can just sum it up in a few words it's about income because so, all the ver everything else is variable right right but you can't really for have your income stream variable and so or you won't have any peace of mind but that's another discussion <laughs> so when you're fi and that's right you can you can live but you're not going to have peace of mind right if, if, if you if the income stream right. isn't there at a level that that, that is making you feel like you're kind of living comfortably. I found the most, one of the most valuable things um, people is, have found as they age mm -hmm. is really knowing that no matter what happens, they have a minimum base of income. There's an amount. Yeah, to live on or coming in every month. Um, and so, Which can and, be, and so come give, from lots of different resources. Could be from a lot of places. So, yeah. and so you and you see that you see people who have got an an annuity that for right. some reason they got because they got sold an annuity. Right. But who knows? No, less than fifty percent of my clients ever exactly understand why it was they bought that annuity. Right. Except somebody sold it to them. Right. And I always tell people, I said, you know, if you're talking to a financial planner, you know, f figure out why they're telling you that. Right. You know, you want to kind of understand that, right? So there's the annuity, and then there's, the, there's, the, there's pension, and then there's this variable about Social Security, and then there are IRAs and 401Ks, which may or may not be annuities. What, how do you kind of right. unravel Robert all of that in order to try to figure out, to come to that answer of, you know, what's going to be, what, what can you have for an income stream, and how do you use it? And then circle back to that last question. Should I be deferring my Social Security, or should I be taking it? <laughs> And how do I figure that out? <laughs> a question um, that got asked of me yesterday <laughs> by um, a different set of clients, you know. <laughs> um, how do you get to all that? Well, you know, I tend to just lay it yeah. out in front of me on a big spreadsheet of paper. I just yeah. lay all the assets out. And kind of look at them. It's like putting together a puzzle. Yeah. yeah. And based on the situation in the person's life, you know, if they're single, there are a lot of people in their 60s who are single. Um, by choice, by divorce, right. things right. like that, right. being a widow. Um, 
and people cannot people cannot tell you you cannot expect someone to tell you where do you want to be 10 years from now no. where do you want to live someone that's retiring is trying to figure out the next six months you know right. maybe they have some general ideas about the big picture right so I found the most valuable thing to people in that situation um, is, okay, well, how about if we come up with a plan, you know, using various resources, you know, you can plan on whatever the number is, 3000 or 4000 a month. A and, month. Uh, you know, and yep. depending how long you've worked, you can get, you know, 1500 a couple thousand from Social Security. Um, and then you kind of build it around, well, gee, you know, if someone's starting before 65, do you start income from some assets now? Then you add in Social Security. Then there are also certain ages you have to take withdrawals from, um, mandatory withdrawals from your retirement accounts. From your tech, and is that, and now, then, is, is that always the same number? I always hear 70 and a half, and I think that's like a, so, that's somebody's number. <laughs> as, as the number at which you have to start taking money. But is there a, is there a, is there a I've universal? I've never been able to figure this out. No. 59 and a half. Why 59 and a half? Why the, is the uh, earliest you can take out without, money without a penalty. Without getting slapped with a penalty. Why right. 59 and a half? Why I don't know. Hmm. Right. And you have to begin withdrawals by, in general, um, April 1st, following the year you turn 70 and a half. Come on. <laughs> it's following the year that you turn You're 70 and a 70 half? You turn 70 and a half. That's great. Yeah. That's so, yeah. I, I, so why is this happening? I don't know. But those are, like, those are the numbers the way they are now yeah. and the way they've been for a long time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, tax efficiency is a part of it, too. Tax efficiency. If you take your Social Security too early and you're still working, half of your Social Security could become taxable. Um, if you have assets oh, in a only Roth, only half of it. Well, it depends. It I depends they all on. Could I didn't know that. Right. Yeah, up to certain amounts. Yeah. Um, sometimes they allow you to earn. Um, depending on whether it's the year you retire or if it, in earlier age, earlier ages you have to give up, like maybe half of your social security comes. Um, taxable the year you retire um, about a third of it becomes taxable if you earn more than roughly 40,000 a year I see. I see. and they're um, all just math problems. I mean these are all questions that you know once again that you would have these would, are all we would math. go to I you mean, to, to get those kinds of answers right just to know how those formulas work. the numbers yeah. are sort of the easier part because you have calculators and spreadsheets and things that can project right you know, different rates of interest, what you could expect for income, and so on. Um, but the really challenging thing is the strategy. And what's, you can have a perfect strategy, but it has to be realistic. It has to be right. realistic for that person. Right, because the dollars are the dollars, ultimately. Right. You know, and and, and, when, and at, at, when you get to my advanced age, you know, <laughs> you're not... You're not going to be I'm seeing, you know, there's huge numbers of new dollars, at least not coming from income or not coming from earned income. You know, you may right. be getting, and, and I've seen, you know, cl clients that just couldn't bear the numbers and so started taking, using their money and investing it in these crazy ways, buying gold from so-and-so that's mm. going to make you this tremendous rate of return and stuff just because they couldn't face the reality of, you know, here's your income stream, right? And that's tough. It's, and it's, you know, when you get into a situation with couples, that can be challenging too. Um, because one of the parties might have a serious health issue. And then right. how do you organize the assets for that? I mean, right. I know that kind of yeah. leads to what you do. Um, you yeah, know, those... what's the w proper way to have everything set up to... Um, Minimize what the government gets. Still pass assets efficiently to your heirs. Right. You know, what do you do with your business? And how, um, kind of how do you figure that out? And I always right. tell folks, I'll say, you know, because a lot of folks will be talking to me 
well, I was just with a couple, and they were talking to me about, so how do we deal with the kind of the, the, the nursing home cloud right. that keeps get, getting bigger the older you get because of your likelihood, if you haven't died of something else, of needing nursing home care keeps going up. But I keep saying, this is only a piece of your puzzle. You right. know, I can tell you how to qualify for these government benefits, but as to what, whether that's the best strategy, given the fact that you have to change your investments and their return, or given the fact that you may have to pay some tax on some money in order to right. do this kind of restructuring, so that's, somebody else does that. And mm -hmm. you really need to be having that conversation really with, I always say, with the financial planner, with your accountant. You know, that's right. really, there were really three people. But now I'm going to go back. So tell me again. So I'm 66, right? It, what is kind of the framework that I use to figure out whether I should be taking my Social Security now, right? Assuming that I'm going to keep working, right? That I'm going to work certainly until I'm 70. I figure my dad retired when he was 73 if it was good enough for him, you know? So I'll work until I'm 73, right? Um, but how do I figure it out as far as Social Security is concerned? Well, that's a very, I mean, it's a very individual question well, based and, and, on everything and, else. And maybe that's the right answer, is that you, and you, I re you, you really can't just do that. All, there's no pat. Is, and what, you know, what's your wife's situation with right. hers? Um, yeah, and how long are we going to live? You know, the likelihood, do people in your family live a long time? What's your longevity? Right. Like, I, you know, what's right. the likelihood of um, doing, of you know, living to your 90s. So I remember seeing, a, seeing a, um, a presentation, and I remember this guy was saying that basically, if you're single, right, and you're just trying to decide whether to defer until you're 70 as opposed to taking, at that time, at 65, mm -hmm. right, that the place, the, 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 that the, the, at, that, at that time, the place at which the lines crossed, where you ended up, in terms of real dollars, making more dollars by deferring than by taking it right away. It was like age 80 or 81. It was kind of where they crossed. Right. But I remember this person saying, but don't forget, that applies to you and your wife, right? Because if you die and your wife didn't make that much money, then when you die, she's going to get your Social Security check. And so even if you die before you're 81, if she's going to live until she's 90, then by you deferring and therefore having giving her a bigger check for those extra years, you really... So that it, 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 I kept listening to this going, God, there's just a million of these variables. If and so she, it's very individual. If she worked for, you know, a school system or a government, she might not even be eligible to get your Social Security. So when is the best time for you to take it? And she's a teacher. So that's right. That's so, exactly right. So um, I'm single, 55, and... For me, it's 55. really going to be 70. I wish I could the remember 55. That was, <laughs> that was so long ago. So, so you're Wow, you're it went by fast. So you're, you're telling me. So you're thinking 70? You're thinking that's... Oh, a, yeah. Yeah. Because the difference of taking it early at 65, 66. Yeah. I think my full retirement age is 66 and seven months. For versus you. we... Yeah, waiting until, you know, someone who's 55. Right. Not right. me, but... Um, Versus waiting until seventy, the difference is my it's more than eight hundred dollars a month. Why wouldn't I keep working and would, right. get a few more right. years of income? So what about um, that that kind of standard question about you on your tax deferred money? Do yeah. I take it now or do I take it later? Cause, so one of the conversations I have with 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 clients who are older is they say, well, you know. There are a whole lot of variables, but one of the things you got to keep re remembering is, you know, I, I have clients still say, I never want to touch that money because I'm going to have to pay tax on it. I'd rather leave it to my kids. And I'll say to them, but who's in the higher tax bracket? You know, I said, if you take the money out because you're retired, right. your tax bracket may be very low. I said, how are your kids doing? And they'll inevitably say, well, not all, but we'll say, oh, they're doing great. I'll say, yeah, exactly. So they're going to be in a really high tax bracket, you know. So there's that, it's, once again, you, talk, you talked about that kind of trying to indi tailor something individually. There's so many of those variables. IRAs are probably the most complicated asset that you could leave. Um, there are various distribution rules depending on whether it goes to your spouse or your children. Um, 
one thing I suggest to everyone who's retired, if you have substantial assets, IRAs you're not using, yeah. and you're um, philanthropic or charitable minded, use the assets in your IRA. You're required to take a distribution every year. Mm -hmm. You can take out more than that and just have it gifted directly to the charity, whether it's your church, anything else. The government still allows that right now. And it's a much more efficient use of that block of money because you're giving an asset and it goes directly to the charity and no one pays the tax on it because you get the oh because you get the the charitable deduction for all of the money that goes to the and it ends up balancing the the money that you put the income that you yeah. pulled out so that's really nice yeah so that i mean there're just so many things because a similar thing happens for estate do. for estate tax purposes you know you just you just you start saying to yourself so if you get if you can leave the money directly to Charities, right? You, that money kind of comes off the or take you top. doing it, doing not even leaving it through your will, but that's the, the estate planning thing, right? Um, right. Which is the be, you know it's great to leave an IRA to charity, but using a, um, I believe it's a hundred thousand dollars, they let you gift out of your IRA to a charity a year, directly to the charity, right? No, I didn't know that. If you're retired, yeah, I didn't know that. You could take that that big a chunk of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very handy. It used to be, yeah. And so, what do you tell them about annuities? What do you, what do you, when you're talking about annuities for clients, for clients who are 65 <sighs> or older? I view annuities simply as a guaranteed future income stream. Not in, they're never an investment. You're never going to come out on the investment ladder ahead having your money in an annuity, an annuity. versus, versus not. And there are various kinds of annuities. There are fixed rate and there yeah. are variable ones that are invested in the stock market. A lot of them have in them though, it's important to go through them because a lot of them will have income guarantees um, that are, are, can be much higher than the actual cash value of the annuity, mm -hmm. but they're strictly for income. That's how I view them. That's the real for game. For future income. Mm -hmm. That's the real game. Yeah. And, and, and from the perspective of what you said, you know, your kind of mantra, which is it's all, about the, it's all about figuring out what your income stream is going to be. That could be a candy. Right. And once right? you annuitize a contract and set up a guaranteed income payment, that never changes. Right. Regardless of what happens in the stock market. Right. And and I can I tell you, I know some people in their 70s that had them in 2008 and were, had a lot of money in them. And, um, you know, when the markets blow up and you're still getting your same income, that's pretty still, nice. I mean, you can't, you can't get 5% a year in the bank right now. Right. Um, you can't get anywhere near. So, you know, <laughs> right. and... and I don't want to get too much into any kind of yeah. product type details, but no, no, I understand. I'm generally I just, not. Um, I was just curious. I the, was just curious. That's really where I think their place is, yeah. but not as a, as a big general world. investment yeah. asset. And then, and, and for, when, it's really for a guaranteed future income stream. And, and this is another one of those places where I talk to my clients about because I say, so that's you know, that's kind of a balance right. that you annuitize it, and now you do have that guaranteed income. Of course, now if you go to the nursing home. Um, if and you and you want to be qualifying for Mass Health, um, once you've qualified for Mass Health, the, the, what happens is all of your income goes to the nursing home, and then Mass Health pays the difference between that number and whatever, whatever the nursing home costs. So if you've annuitized it and so you've got an income stream, that income's all going to the nursing home, right? So it's so there is that kind of, there. Is, so that's just why I talk to folks about you know you need to figure off these trade-offs. Right. Or but if you know, you're the what, spouse at home, you get to keep that income because exactly right. that's your personal income stream. It's not a exactly right. A joint and, and income the, and stream. The, and there turns out to be a, a use for those annuities actually in that kind of planning, even for people who would never buy one for the income right. value. Just because they're simply that's the right a tool. Structure. Yeah. They're just a tool. That's how I view them in a toolbox and. Um, some situations are right, some they're not. Um, it's interesting, I wanted to touch on, you are talking about um, the income stream, someone, say, having to go to the island home. I've had three situations where the cost is virtually 
almost the same between being in the island home, mm-hmm. staying at home with 24-hour care, and that's not your spouse. That's right. if you're just an individual with right. 24-hour care, or essentially being in Sherburne Commons for, with 24-hour care. And the number's pretty staggering. And they're, and they're pr- yeah, they're big numbers. About, but hundred, about 140,000 a year. Right. But, but interestingly, they're the same number. Right? Yes. You don't... I think that's only because it's Nantucket. I don't know. The, the, uh, that's an interesting question. I think the staying at home part is more expensive here because you're Nantucket. Right. Right. So the home care is higher. Right. Right. So the typical, the, 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 the typical agency home care bill back in America is, yeah. about, in, is about $25 an hour. It's higher, I think, higher here, right? The typical person who is just working as an individual in a, in a home outside of an agency here is about $13 or $14 an hour. Back in America, it's higher mm-hmm. here. So, so that, that, that number here tends to be really comparable, right? But just in general, it's always surprising to be people. They say, well, you know, I never want to go to a nursing home. I want to stay home. And I'll say, well, you know, that's great, except it might cost you about the same. And they're yeah. just, they kind of can't believe it, you know. But in, in, in it's, and it's almost impossible to get enough income to deal with that eventuality, right? Or it's hard to get that amount of income. It's hard. Right, right. It can be a challenge. It's all, yes, yes. So thank you. I really appreciate this. I appreciate the kind of the, the, you. you know, the, I think it's important for people to understand. Well, I'll go right to the end. To end, it is important for people to understand there are these varieties of issues you need to look at. You need to be talking to, if, you know, many of my clients, the, a piece of their world is figuring out how a nursing home would affect them, right? But another piece is figuring out uh, what, how their investments are going to work out, how the tax piece works. And I think, going back to, to Sue's point, this notion, I think it's true for all of my clients, you expressed it wonderfully, is making sure that you're not losing sleep at night by knowing that you're going to have an income stream that's going to make you okay, right? So trying to figure that out and trying to develop a plan as opposed to, I have many of you, maybe, maybe you're not like this. Many of my clients come to me and they've got kind of this and that and this and that and an IRA and an annuity, but they've never got a plan, right? So to develop that plan, you may decide it would be a handy thing. And I really appreciate your being able to express that for us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next uh, um, episode of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you.